Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty. Uh, I don't normally do this for the study guides, uh, but I do want to do it for this one because it is kind of a quick turnaround. We only did three lessons uh, before actually starting on this process of preparing for the chapter eight, number one, which is going to be on simple and compound interest. So I just wanted to create a little video to kind of get you started with, with these problems that we're going to be solving. Um, so here, we've got, I think, a total of 10 problems in this study guide. And I think the first half, like the first five of them are simple interest, and then the last five are compound interest. So I'm gonna do a couple each to get you started, and then that should give you plenty of time to practice with the other ones. Uh, or maybe I'll just do one each, that way you can do like four of each kind, just to make sure that you're understanding things. Uh, the first thing I would recommend that you do is highlight this formula which is for simple interest, and highlight this formula, which is for compound interest, okay? Uh, and if you recall that when we were, uh, when I was teaching a lesson and I gave you the formula, I might have used T instead of N, um, but that's just, you know, it, it says all the information here, T and N both represent the number of time periods. So you could use either one, okay? So in this case, it's T time, in this case, it's the number of time periods, but it could also be just T for time in, in that one as well. So when you're reading through a problem, I, I want to make this clear. It will tell you if the problem is simple interest or if it's compound interest. So go through and use the 5D process. If this is a simple interest problem, then the formula is I equals P times R times T, PRT. And so I would always recommend that you start off every single one of these problems by defining each one of these according to the problem that's, that's been given. So I'm looking here and it says Tong loaned uh, Jody $50 for a month. Okay, so that's the amount of money that we're working with. That's what we're starting with. That's gonna be your principal. So let's just go ahead and write down $50 for the principal charged 5% simple interest for the month. So that's our rate, 5%. And remember, we want to convert that to a decimal number. And it's really important, everyone, maybe I'll back up for a second here. It's really important that you understand how to go back and forth between a percent, a decimal, and a fraction. If you recall, 5% literally means 5 out of 100. And if you're not really clear on how to change this fraction to its decimal equivalent and just treat it like a, a, a division problem. Five divided by 100 is going to give you the decimal equivalent of 0 0.05, which is also called five hundredths. Okay, so um, just, you know, there's a shortcut where you just move the decimal two places to the left, but I'd rather you understand why 5% is 0 0.05, it's, it's 500, okay? And then the amount of time, what kind of a time period are we talking about here? How much did Jody have to pay? Okay, so it's $50 for a month, one month, and he charged simple interest for the month. So we're just talking about the number one, it's for one month. So that should make it easy. So we're gonna take I equals PRT, and what they're trying to find out is how much she have to pay in interest. Okay, it's not saying how much does she pay in interest, but how much does she have to pay? That's what they're implying. Um, you know, of course, you're going to have to give back the $50 that you borrowed, that Jody borrowed, plus an additional amount. So maybe we'll answer both of them. Um, I'm not really crazy about how this question is asked. If on the chapter test, I'll make sure you know exactly what you need to declare for your answer. So let's go ahead and do this. Why is this doing that? Don't do that. Okay. We're trying to find the interest. They've given us the principal. That gets multiplied times the rate, which is a decimal number, which gets multiplied times the time. Which, no, no, the time is one month. Let's just put in a one there. Okay, so now we can use our calculator. 50 times 500 times one will give us the amount of the interest. So there's our, well, I'll just start over. 50 times 0 0.05 
equals, and can we all agree that when you multiply that times one, it's just gonna be equal to that. So let's just leave that as 2.5 because we're talking money, it's $2.50. So, okay, how much did Judy have to pay Tong? Um, I, we're either gonna say she had to pay him $2.50 or we're gonna say he had to, she had to pay him back $52.50 because you gotta pay back $50 plus the interest. So go ahead and declare either one of those answers and I, I promise you on the chapter test, uh, I'll make it clearer than this one is, okay? Let's do a second one, see if it's a little bit easier to, to read through this. All right, Jessica's grandparents gave her $2,000. Got it. All right, two thousand dollars. She's put into a savings account until uh, until she starts college in four years. Her grandparents agreed to pay an additional seven point five percent simple interest for every year, and it looks like she's got four years before she will need that money. So if I equals PRT, we don't know how much interest she's going to make. We know the principal was the two thousand dollars that the parents put into the account. The interest rate that they're offering is 7.5%, and the time period is four years. Okay, so let's put this into the formula. The interest earned will be $2,000 times the decimal equivalent of 7.5%, so let's see what that is, 7.5 divided by 100, stop. 7.5 divided by 100 is 0 0.075, 0 0.075, and that is for four years. So I'm gonna start by multiplying 2000 times 7.5% because I wanna find out how much she's gonna make or they're gonna give her each year. So I'm gonna multiply that times 2000, and that is 150 dollars per year for four years and i think most of us could probably get to this point that's going to end up being six hundred dollars that their grandparents are going to chip in toward her uh, college education let's just verify that i didn't make a mistake yes six hundred dollars so how much extra money will her parents give her well this is what her, her grandparents i mean that's how much they're going to give her um, the parents gave the 2000 the bank's going to provide some of the interest, I suppose, and then the grandparents are going to chip in this amount. So there you go. You declare that as the answer. The grandparents will chip in $600. So this is how simple interest works. It's all based on I equals PRT formula. Now let's switch over to compound interest. The formula for compound interest is to take the principal multiply that times one plus the interest rate. Now, what's the rationale behind this? It's one plus the interest rate means you're gonna have 100% of the money that you deposited or borrowed, depending on whether it's a loan or a uh, savings account or, or something that will gain money over time, uh, plus the additional interest rate, whatever that would be in decimal form. So. Uh, then we raise it to either N or T. I'm just in the habit of putting the number of times T uh, for the exponent. So let's go ahead and define all of these variables so that we can put everything into the formula. My put $4,250 in a bank at 4%, which is in, uh, interest compounded annually. Annually mean, meaning once per year. So let's go ahead and write down what we've got so far. That's the principal. That's the amount of money being put into the bank, $4,250. The interest rate is 4.4%, which when you take that 4.4 and you divide it by 100, no, yes, you get 0 0.044. And how much was in her account after seven years? So it's going to be compounded annually once a year for seven years means it's going to be compounded seven times. So let's go ahead and let's take this decimal number and add it to the one. So that's going to be 1.044. That's what goes inside the parentheses. The uh, principal gets multiplied times that. And then this is going to be raised to the seventh power. So 
How much was in her account? We're going to find the new balance. That's what the A means for compound interest. If they asked us how much interest was earned, we would have to take this new amount and subtract away the amount that she deposited just to find out how much it increased by. But this is going to take care of it. And so instead of using this calculator, which has its limitations, I'm going to prefer to actually use the Google Scientific Calculator, which is made for problems like this. So what do I have to do? I have to put in $4,250. That's the principal. Start a parentheses with 1.044 and end the parentheses. And I didn't do that right. Let's start this over again. 0 0.044 end parentheses. Did I? Am I getting? Yes, 0 0.0. Okay. And then let's raise that. Here's the button for raising that to the power of 7. So let's put a 7 in there. When I hit the equal button, that's going to give us her new balance, my new balance. So let's see what this is. It ends up being $5,745.03. We're going to round that to the nearest hundredth, which is the nearest penny. Looking at the digits to the right of it, that's not a five or greater, so we keep this the same. It's going to be three cents. So 5745.03. And three cents. Now, if once again, if we want to find out how much interest was earned, just subtract away the $4,250 and see what you get. So that's going to be a 3, that's going to be a 0, that's going to be a 5. I better change that to a 56, so if that becomes a 14, and that's 14 minus 5 is 9, and 56 minus 42, I'm certain, is 1,400. So this will be the amount of interest that was earned, $1,495.03. But that's not what this question asked. This question asked how much would she have in her account. So her account would have $5,745.03. Okay, so what do we have to remember here? Obviously the formula and where you plug everything in. We need to remember how to convert from a percent to a decimal number. So you can just put the one point and then whatever this decimal number is. So every time you do this, just change that zero in the ones place to a one, and you'll have the appropriate number inside the parentheses. Pay attention to how often it is being compounded. If it said it was being compounded monthly, seven years, you would have to do that 12 times a year. That would be 84 times that you would put uh, up here for the T. You'd put an 84 there. So be aware of all the language. Make sure that you work through the 5D process and you've got everything fully described and defined. And then when you do the process, use the formula and choose either whatever calculator works best for you, but a scientific calculator is necessary raise these uh, to this appropriate power. Okay, so I think that is it. I'm going to let you work through the rest of them. And good luck. We'll check it tomorrow before we take the test. Take care. Bye. Hey, feeling good, like I should.